while Drew, Timmy, and Julian Strother will go right up to the deadline to announce their plans for next season. Zags fans got a welcome news that guard Rasir Bolton is running it back in Spokane next year. Today's episode talks about what kind of impact he will have on this team and the young guards next season. And we even hear from Roz himself about why he's excited to be back at Gonzaga all right here on the Locked On Zags podcast. Don't go away. You are Locked On Zags, your daily podcast on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to the Locked On Zags podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host and longtime Gonzaga podcaster, Andy Patton, here to bring you news and updates on all things Zag athletics. I want to thank all of you who've continued to make Locked On Zags your first listen of the day, as well as those of you who have checked the show out on YouTube. If you have not done so yet, just go to youtube.com, search Locked On Zags, and hit that subscribe button. All right, one third of the Zags who are making their final decisions on whether they are going to stay in the 2022 NBA draft and forego their remaining college eligibility, or if they're going to come back to Spokane, one third of those players have made their decision. That is, of course, Rasir Bolton, who I have maintained on this podcast incorrectly that I thought Roz was more likely to leave than come back. There were some rumblings the kind of the weeks leading up to this that he was actually kind of starting to, to lean back towards coming back. I don't know how much of that is just kind of, you know, what the, where there's smoke, there's fire. So potentially there was some, some rumors out there that he was going to come back. But uh, obviously he made the decision that the NBA or professional routes weren't as lucrative or weren't as enticing to him has the opportunity to come back to Spokane. Uh, This is huge news for Gonzaga. Certainly, I think a lot of fans are are more eager to find out what's going to happen with Drew and Julian, and I can understand that. Obviously, Drew Timmy is a a monumental impact, whether he's here or not here next year, and I can understand why that is at the forefront of Gonzaga fans' minds, but this should not be overlooked. This should not be uh, kind of just considered a a foregone conclusion or just another depth option or anything like that. Raz is a very very talented and very critical piece for this team next year. And it did not look like he was coming back when he posted his announcement after the season. It sure looked like he was done playing college basketball. He's been in college hoops for a long time. He started his career at Penn State, came to Iowa State for a couple of years, played last year at Gonzaga. Certainly wouldn't have blamed him for wanting to look for professional avenues, even if the NBA was unlikely to come calling. Uh, he has acknowledged, and we'll hear more from him in the second segment, that he maybe didn't get some of the feedback that he thought he would get uh, per, for pursuing an NBA career, uh, which is why he's part of the reason he has made the decision to come back to Spokane. Uh, he wasn't going to get drafted. I, I don't think his numbers popped enough for that to be a significant part of his game you know he wasn't at the NBA draft combine not that there aren't players at the combine who get drafted that does happen but it definitely didn't point towards that there was the possibility of a two-way contract we've seen a lot of Gonzaga players use that to get into the NBA Killian Tilly is a very notable example of that Joel Ayayi was on a two-way contract for the majority of last season but this is a huge get for Gonzaga Ros Bolton shot 46 percent from three last year. He was on a team that had some consistency issues from beyond the arc. Roz was one of the few stalwarts, him and Chet Holmgren, and even Holmgren struggled at least in the half court offense early in the season. He really struggled to knock those threes down until he got a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more complacent in the offense. But Roz was a consistent outside shooting threat from day one. If he brings that back, if he brings that 40 plus 45% plus three point shooting to a team that really could use it. They're losing Chet Holmgren. They lost Andrew Nembhard, who was a a bit of an inconsistent outside shooter, but really started to knock knock them down towards the end of the year. They returned Hunter Salas, who hasn't proven himself as an outside shooter. They returned Nolan Hickman, who is, I think, a little bit farther ahead as an outside shooter than Salas, but still hasn't proven a ton consistency-wise from beyond the arc. They, of course, bring back Dominic Harris, who is – projected to be a very, very good three-point shooter and was a good three-point shooter in a very small sample as a freshman a couple of years ago. We did not see him last year, of course, because of lingering foot injuries. 
Harris and Bolton should be two of the strongest three-point shooters on this team. That is, of course, depending on what happens with Julian Strother, who is going to make his decision at some point today, as you are potent- probably listening to this on Wednesday, June 1st. He has until 8.59 p.m. Pacific time to make that decision based on the way that he is tweeting. He seems like he's going to wait until the final minute there to make that announcement. We will see what he says. But regardless of Julian's decision, getting Roz Bolton back is huge not just for the outside shooting, but the experience. Gonzaga's guard room was going to be very, very young next year. Sure, Dominic Harris is a junior, but he has played very little in his collegiate career. Hunter Salas and Nolan Hickman are five-star kids, very, very talented guards. I think the future for Gonzaga's backcourt resides in those two guys, but they were freshmen last year who played reserve roles. So it's nice to have some more depth. I think Gonzaga was always going to identify having another guard on this roster with some experience. We know that they have been so good at flooding the transfer market and finding the right guards to put into the system. So if Roz didn't come back, they were going to make another addition here. In fact, they still might. The rumors are circulating that Chattanooga guard Malachi Smith is nearly a lock To come to Spokane, I've seen some places that have him over 90% likely to come to Gonzaga. I don't know whether Bolton's decision will impact that or not. Certainly, if Bolton and Strother come back, it is a little bit difficult to imagine what they would do if Malachi Smith also were to come to Gonzaga. They would play a lot of three to potentially four guard lineups next year, which would be fun and interesting. We saw them do that a lot in the 2020-2021 season with Jalen Suggs and Andrew Nembhard and Joel Ayayi and Corey Kispert, depending on whether you consider Corey Kispert or Julian Strother a guard. They're, they're forwards in my mind, they're wings basketball is basically positionless and Mark Few is attempting strongly to make sure that basketball remains positionless in Spokane. So I'm not sure that it matters all that much, but there was some, the 2020-2021 team struggled with post defense, especially as they got later into the tournament and they ran into some more of those big physical teams, a la Baylor, who we will talk about in the third segment here today. But Having Julian play a lot of minutes at the four is something that I think we will see a lot next year. Again, assuming he comes back, we're going to talk a lot more about Julian and Drew on tomorrow's episode once we hear what decision they are officially making and how that's going to, of course, impact the rest of the roster. For now, Bolton's back. He brings elite three-point shooting. He brings leadership skills. One of my favorite things about Bolton this year was in games where Gonzaga needed somebody to step up whether it was because Drew Timmy was in foul trouble or he just, he had an uncharacteristically off night, which we saw a few times last year, whether Chet was in foul trouble, whether Nembhard didn't have his characteristically good shooting. Bolton stepped up in those games nearly 100% of the time. He was awesome in the final few games of the season, games that Gonzaga didn't play particularly well. He was good. He was, he made basically every free throw he took in the NCAA tournament. And as folks will remember, Most of the rest of the players on the team did not do that. He was clutch. He was poised. He was ready for the moment. It was his first NCAA tournament. He had played in just as many NCAA tournament games as Chet Holmgren and Hunter Salas and Nolan Hickman, but he still came out and balled out in the tournament. He's back next year, fifth year in college playing on the team, second time making the NCAA tournament next year. He's going to be really, really ready for it. Beyond all of that, Beyond all of that with Ross, the other big thing is he's a pillar in the Spokane community. He came here, he immediately acclimated himself to the people of who needed help in Spokane. He partnered with Rick and started doing backpack giveaways, started helping the homeless community in Spokane. A tremendous debt of gratitude to him for doing that, for helping people in need. He did not have to do that. Gonzaga basketball players are always expected to be positive role models in the community and to help out when they can. They have some required things that they do, and those are great. And and players who do nothing more than that are not bad people, but to go be above and beyond that, to take your precious free time in college and to use that to help people who need it is a tremendous thing to do. And Ross is, is such a great person to have back in Spokane because of that, because he will do that, because there, there are people who their lives changed because Bolton decided to come back to Spokane. They may not know it yet, 
They may not know the impact that he is going to have, but he will help them by raising money for them, by getting them food, by getting them a backpack, by doing something like that. People who need help in Spokane are now in better hands because Bolton is back. And that beyond anything that's happening on the basketball court is more important than any of that. We are going to talk more about Ross Bolton in the second segment. However, we're going to play a five minute clip of a brief interview that Brenna Green of KREM had with Bolton right after he made his decision to come back to Spokane. So we're going to listen to that here in the second segment. Before we get there, though, let's talk about rockauto.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning, like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX, and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Plus, Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, and they have everything you could need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpets. I just had my 13-year-old car serviced recently, and I can tell you having one place to find all the parts I need makes things infinitely easier. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. All right, segment two. Still Andy Patton, still Locked On, Zach. So we have an important favor to ask you here at Locked On. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On podcasts. Go to lockedonpodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our on audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Thank you for your help. So Bolton is back. He becomes the first of three Zags to make his decisions while we wait for Drew Timmy and Julian Strother to do the same. Rasir spoke with Brenna Green of KREM and discussed how it was a, a relatively easy decision for him to return to Spokane, how he feels the team has some unfinished business after exiting the NCAA tournament earlier than expected last season. Roz also has a message to fans and the Spokane community. You can check it all out here. How much did you go back and forth on, on this decision? How, how difficult was this for you? Um, I mean, it was definitely a tough decision, uh, you know, going through the process and thinking about it and you know, just keeping all my options open and, you know, trying to pick what's best for me. But, you know, at the end of the day, I felt like, you know, this was the best move for me, you know, in my career. And, you know, it really wasn't that tough. You know, it's not it's not hard to go back to, to Spokane and Gonzaga and do it one more year. So it wasn't wasn't that hard. <laughs> what was the SAS reaction when you said, all right, let's run it back? Uh, you know, they were excited. You know, they welcomed me with open arms and, you know, told me to keep working and, you know, let's get ready to, to make another run next year. Yeah, definitely. Um, why did you decide that the right decision was for you to come back to GU? Um, you know, just getting feedback, you know, uh, you know, just seeing how my pro career would have played out, just kind of, you know, seeing how it would be if I went out now or, you know, came back to school for another year and kind of, you know, weighed the pros and cons. And, you know, I felt like going back to school one more year would be best for me. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have such a connection to this this town I feel like do, do yeah, you feel like this yeah how 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 much should that uh play in your decision to come back as well um I mean it definitely played a, a role it was definitely a big factor for sure you know just uh you know thinking about Rick and talking to him and you know what we could do when I come back and you know getting that process rolling as far as you know as long as it's as, as long side with basketball uh you know it's been fun it was definitely a you know big part of the decision once I you know decided to come back mm -hmm. Did you feel like you have like a like the most connection to Spokane out of any college town that you've lived in, or do you feel like you've always had that connection everywhere you've gone? Um, well, I mean, you know, everywhere I've been, I've I've loved the fans and the community. So, uh, you know, I think the connections. I think Spokane may be a little different. Uh, I'm a little older, and then you know, with Rick being able to help me out, and you know, being able to help him help the community, kind of, you know, enhance that relationship in uh, Spokane for sure. Totally. You, you don't know what the what the makeup of this team is, but you at least know some of the parts 
that are returning, what are you what are you most excited about of the returners you know of so far? Um, I would say just uh getting back together. You know, I think you know last year was a lot of guys first time playing with each other and uh, you know, just kind of meeting each other for the first time with freshmen. And, you know, me being a transfer and you know going through that process. But I think you know coming back this year, already having a year under our belt, knowing each other, and having that experience and, you know, seeing what it takes, you know, the freshmen see what it takes to get through a season. And, you know, me being in my first NCAA tournament, seeing what it takes to get through that and just uh, really just taking those learning experiences and building on them and hopefully, you know, this next year, make another run at it. How much did, you know, losing earlier than you, you probably expected in the tournament, did, did that kind of motivate you in, in a way to, to like, is that one of the reasons why you were like, all right, I'm ready to come back and do this a little bit longer? Uh, I mean, yeah, once, you know, once I thought about it, you know, I definitely, uh, I definitely came in a little bit, but, uh, you know, I can tell I played a great game. You know, I've been working out since the, since the buzzard ended. So, uh, just ready to get back and play again. Awesome. Um, you know, I, I know when you originally came here, the original press release said that, that you were junior and then it changed to saying that you were senior. Mm -hmm. It, could you have yeah. have seen this decision coming when you uh, originally decided to commit here last year? Um, I mean, honestly, I was just kind of, you know, focused on that one year. I wasn't really thinking about, uh, you know, the future or what, you know, what I was going to do this upcoming year until, you know, after the season, really, I tried to just focus on basketball in my role and kind of, you know, making the best season of the one I was playing in. But, um, I mean, I guess I can see it because I'm here now. So, uh, just just what has it been like, kind of living in this limbo for the last two months? Um, it's been uh, I mean, it's been different. You know, just going through that process. Uh, you know, working out and things like that. But um, you know, I just think it taught me how to just stay down and kind of control what you can, and you know, focus on myself and do what's best for me and things like that. Kind of uh, work on myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. What's just your your message for the fans uh, about this next year? Huh? Let's have some fun. That's, that's all I can say. Just just let's have some fun. You know, we're gonna have fun on the court. You know, with the energy they give us and the love they give us the game. So I think you know, if everybody has fun, I think it'll be a great year. All right. Thanks to Brenna again for sharing that. We're going to come back in the third segment and discuss the other big news from Tuesday, which is that Gonzaga and Baylor are officially on the calendar for December in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Before we give a preview of that game, however, let's talk about Bet Online. The 2022 NCAA tournament is in the books with a win secured by Bill Self and the Jayhawks of Kansas. While the Zags unfortunately fell short of the game's pinnacle week, that does not mean fans cannot remain in on the action. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, you name it. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your latest sports developments, including podcasts and reviews for all the leagues this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Heck, they even have lines on a fight between Will Smith and Chris Rock, should you be so inclined. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, segment three, still Andy Patton, still locked on Zags. Moving over to talk about some scheduling news that broke on a very busy day in the Spokane basketball community. The Zags are set officially to play the Baylor Bears on December 2nd, 2022 at the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This is, of course, a rematch of the 2020, 2021, try that again, NCAA championship game where the Zags fell to Baylor 86 to 70. It is the, that was the sixth time these two teams have met. Gonzaga was 5-0 and prior to that game. Of course, that is the only one that really matters in the grand scheme of things, unfortunately. The Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota is a bit of a I don't want to say controversial choice because I think I understand why both teams did it, but it is unfortunate that such a high profile game will not be played at either team's home arena. 
Uh, Gonzaga has played here before. For anybody who thinks this sounds familiar, they played against Iowa there in 2020, a game they won 99 to 88. That was a great matchup. Drew Timmy versus Luca Garza, a very big game from Jalen Suggs, one of his first really big games in a Gonzaga uniform. So this is not an unfamiliar area for these Zags. It is unfortunate that this game cannot be a true home or a true road game. I think of the, I don't criticize Coach Few all of that often, but this is one that I have noticed and that I think it could be changed. The, the team, they're not unwilling to play anybody, and I think that they deserve praise for that, especially as we see a lot of high-profile programs tend to not schedule the greatest non-conference. Of course, those teams have better conference schedules to help balance them out, whereas Gonzaga needs to lean into as many high-profile non-conference games as they can. We've seen them do an excellent job of that. We just mentioned Iowa. We've seen them play teams like Virginia and Kansas and Duke and North Carolina and play in the highest-profile tournaments that they can. Uh, obviously, adding Baylor to the schedule when they already have a ton of other really good games coming up this year is fantastic, and I think a really, really promising thing. But the Zags don't play a lot of road games. And, and part of that, I think, is it's not all their fault. They have attempted to schedule home and homes with high-profile programs for years and have struggled to do so. Teams do not want to come to Spokane and lose. Uh, it's not a very big arena, which is a little bit less appealing for some of those opposing teams. And so you have this kind of dichotomy where the Zags play a lot of neutral site games. Tons and tons of neutral side games. They played Alabama in Seattle last year. They play in Phoenix very frequently. We've seen them play Duke at the Madison Square Garden in years past. Now, of course, they're playing their second game in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I would like to see Gonzaga play more true road games in the non-conference. It's they're hard. They're hard games. It's hard. It's hard to win on the road against really good high profile programs in the non-conference slate. But Gonzaga, this is another step that they can take to continue to challenge themselves. Again, I'm not, I don't think Mark Few is shying away from these games. I don't think it is a fear-based thing. I think it is a challenge to get teams to agree to do that because Mark Few is not going to go out and say, yeah, we'll play you on the road, but we don't care if you come here. They're going to make those teams play them at home. They want home and home deals. If They're not going to go out on the road and play somebody unless they get themselves a home game as well. And that's likely a part of the sticking point that some of these teams are running into. I don't know the situation with Baylor. I don't know if there was a, a reason that they didn't want to do an actual home and home agreement going forward, what that might have looked like if this was just a situation where there was some financial incentives to play in South Dakota. I'm sure that that was in some way the case, but it's a rematch of the national champion. There's a lot of good stories here. There's players remaining from both sides, potentially, especially if Drew Timmy returns, uh, that will kind of help even make that a little bit more of an intense game. And the fans want to be here for this. The students want to be here for this, whether it's home or on the road. I would rather play this game in Baylor than in Sioux Falls. To be perfectly honest, I would rather play this game there. And it's, it would be harder, but it's just more fun. College basketball's biggest advantage, the biggest thing that college hoops have over the NBA and over a lot of other sports, professional or college, is the atmosphere. The atmospheres at games are incredible. Not just Gonzaga games, but most college basketball arenas have are, are have excellent fans, especially for big, high-profile games. And to rob the fans of either of these sport of either of these schools of the opportunity to do that, we're talking December second. School's not out. This is not a December twenty-eighth game, which I don't mind if you play that pretty much wherever because there's not going to be students around, but this is a game, this is a game that students would go to. And it's unfortunate they do not get the opportunity to do so. Talking a little bit more about Baylor, we will likely preview this game much more as we get closer into the season, but just a quick look at Baylor. They're going to be good. <laughs> no, no surprise there. They've been very good under coach Scott Drew for a very long time. Of course, recent national champions as well. They are returning. This is the big news coming out of Baylor. They're returning all Big 12 second team guard Adam Flagler. He is coming back. He tested out the NBA draft. Waters decided to come back to Baylor. He's going to join, join Keontae George and LJ Cryer is going to be the guard combo for them. Uh, that's big news for them, but they also lost a fair amount of talent from this roster. Matthew Meyer is the recent loss. Uh, he is transferring. He is going to Iowa, or excuse me, Illinois. Uh, that's a big loss for them. Uh, Jeremy Sochan and Kendall Brown are both expected to be first round picks in the NBA draft. Sochan could go as soon as the lottery. Brown is kind of right in that late first, early second category. So just like Gonzaga, they're losing some talent. We don't know exactly how much Gonzaga's roster is going to be impacted, of course although we know Chet Holmgren is gone and we know that Andrew Nembhardt is gone. Uh, so we will kind of have to see how this, how this game ends up shaking out from a matchup perspective when we get in to December. 
The last really fun story for this game is that Caleb Lohner cannot escape the Zags. He was at BYU for the last couple of seasons, kind of made himself into a pariah in part by saying some quotes about Gonzaga and how badly they wanted to beat them. And, you know, he, he kind of alienated a few Gonzaga fans with some of those quotes. Uh, he did not play particularly well last year. He was very good as a freshman. He kind of took a step back as a sophomore. He's a good defensive big. He's a very good rebounding big, but his shooting has been very bad throughout his career. It, it picked up towards the end of last season, but his outside shooting hasn't developed, and even his low post scoring and his just general jump shooting has been a challenge. Baylor obviously thinks there's something here that they can kind of turn him into a really useful player. I believe in Scott Drew. I believe that Loner has a lot of untapped potential. Whether there was an issue, issue of, of the coaching staff not being able to, to tap into that at BYU or whether it was just not a good fit or whether he just wanted to go somewhere else. Uh, certainly, Baylor, if you have the opportunity to go play basketball at Baylor, pretty tough to turn that down, especially when you're kind of coming off a not very good season the way that he was. So I'm excited to see what his role is going to look like at Baylor, but I'm also pretty darn excited that there's the possibility – Again, not sure yet. The possibility that Drew Timmy will get another chance to match up with Caleb Lohner in a, with him in a different uniform. Very fun potential opportunity there. We'll see how that, of course, all shakes out in early December. All right, that is going to do it for me today. We, of course, are going to be discussing the decisions from Drew Timmy and Julian Strother in tomorrow's episode right here on the Locked On Zags podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, available on YouTube as well. Thank you again for making Locked On Zags your first listen of the day. Make sure to go check out the Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Raphael Barlow and the NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA Draft, mock drafts, player rankings, and of course, big boards. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. All right, thank you all for listening, and go Zags.